that if we're going to take down America, we just don't have to take down its military. We've got to take down its entire citizenry because they're armed. And that was one of the fears that the Japanese had. So I would say that those common things we need to do and, and also advocate secession of our state. It's time that we secede. We have no say in our government in Washington, and we have very little say in our state. So it's time to secede, and we can put things in order on our state level once we break away from Rome on the Potomac. And that's, a, and that's our Tenth Amendment right, states' rights that's in the right. Constitution. That's right. And even though the Supreme Court said in Brown, White versus, what was White versus Texas, I believe, in uh, 1869, that the Texas versus White, in 1869, that no state can secede, I don't care what they've said. The, the Constitution says, or the law says, the intent of the lawmakers is the law. And the intent right. of the lawmakers was that the states can secede whenever they want to. And I show in my book that three states reserved the right to resume the powers that they delegated at the time they ratified the Constitution. And that was two northern states and one southern state, Virginia, Rhode Island, and New York. So just because this country, what was once a federal Calvinist republic, has been converted into an empire by the 14th Amendment, most people don't know what the 14th Amendment did. So no, we're going to continue to call for secession. We can create our own nation, and then we will resolve our own domestic policies while at the same time arming ourselves in preparation for our invasion because the Jesuits are going to call an army against us for our invasion. So then you believe the revolution is our only way out? Well, I believe faith in Christ, number one. Number two, secession. Secession is, is not really armed revolution. It's exercising your right to your state government to resume the powers that you delegated. And now, whatever state you might be in, for me it's Pennsylvania, we're now a sovereign nation. If there can be a Haiti, there can be a Pennsylvania. There can be a Dominican Republic or an Israel or a Jordan. There can be a Pennsylvania. So we become a sovereign nation once again and be self-governing. But we have to remember, as soon as we break the temporal power of the Pope, as soon as Washington no longer controls us, the Jesuits with their secret societies in your state are going to use their agents to try to implement the same tyranny that we broke away from. So we have to do things like completely abolishing secret societies. They okay. cannot be allowed to exist in your country. Everything they do is evil because they do it in secret and in the darkness of their own lodge rooms or whatever you, they're going to use. So we can't I, tolerate that. Right? I completely agree, Eric. So we have to have nationalism. We have to have a culture once again. And we have to have a people that is distinguished by its race, by its language and its culture, however small that nation might be, so we can have a national identity once again. And then being civil to one another, engage in trade with one another, so that we might benefit from the other cultures and the other peoples while at the same time maintaining our distinctions. Eric, I got one question left. Um, I heard an interview of yours and could have sworn it sounded like you believe that the sun revolves around the earth. Did I hear that right? That's correct. I'm a geocentrist. Mm -hmm. Could you explain that to me a little bit? Sure. In Psalm 19, it teaches that the sun revolves around the earth. Um, there And, of course, there's a few very good books written on it, like The Earth is Not Moving by Marshall Hall and a couple other geocentric b b books on it where, for example, the Mickelson and Morley experiment back in the late 1800s showed that the Earth was at uh, rest and that the sun moved. There were five major experiments conducted to prove that. Well, the Jesuits don't want you to know that because, you see, that's one of their secrets for nuclear detonations. There's no such thing as airborne nuclear war. All nuclear weapons have to be detonated on the ground. They have to be placed in a position. And that particular weapon has to be in a certain harmonic relationship with the sun as it's moving across the sky, wherever it might be in, in this particular Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn, Equator area, whatever, so that it can trigger that device. Once you understand geocentricity, that is one of the keys for detonating a nuclear device. And they don't want you to know that. See, I don't believe anything that NASA tells me or anybody else. Absolutely. Knows. Absolutely. It's just a continuation of Nazism. Did we ever go to the moon? No. Never. All a lie. And Anthony Hilder did a good job with that in one of his videos. I think it's the greatest lie ever sold, where he actually has footage of 
Armstrong, you know, jumping out on the on the uh, surface of the moon, and a prop falls down, a light falls down, and he says, "Well, I guess we have to shoot this again." <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. My last question for you, Eric, is: uh, Was there a Jesuit connection with Nikola Tesla? Yes. Nikola Tesla was as I've been able to find about him, an honest man. He was a Serb, you know, an Orthodox mm-hmm. Serb. Right. Came to came to America and conducted all of his experiments. But he didn't know that he was working for the Jesuits when he was working for J.P. Morgan, because J.P. Morgan was the Jesuit banker of his day. And when he was betrayed and when his tower was destroyed in New York, when he could draw all this energy and light whole cities with no wiring. And J.P. Morgan said, well, we can't charge anybody for this. Then he realized he'd been had. So he then began to resist, and ultimately they stole all of his designs. They killed him, I believe, in 1943. J. Edgar Hoover knew all about it. So he was another sacrifice that the Jesuits carried out because they did not want this technology that was set forth in a historic white Anglo-Saxon Protestant country that still had freedom of conscience, freedom of speech, and freedom of the press, which means freedom of inquiry, freedom of scientific inquiry. So they took everything he had and they used it for their secret technologies to rule over us, to keep us in the dark ages, to keep us driving these disgusting internal combustion engines when we could all be using uh, electromagnetic motors or straight water separating the hydrogen from the oxygen. And so they've kept us down in our technology, and Nikola Tesla is a casualty of that. Are there That's UFOs there? Pardon? Are there, are there uh, aliens that fly UFOs? No. No, I do not believe in the alien agenda. What I do believe in is that there are, in fact, devils or demons that fly around in the atmosphere. But the crafts that are being flown are flown by men. Right? Anti-gravity. Oh, yes, they've perfected anti-gravity for many years. Mm -hmm. And, And the whole Roswell incident was a distraction where they, I believe, they deliberately crashed that device. And they had these poor little men that were a result of genetic experiments by the Jesuits, similar to what they would do in cloning Adolf Hitler, like the boys from Brazil. And so they had these poor little men that they killed in this craft that they were probably flying remotely to then create the scare of our alien foreign outer space invasion that dominated the 50s and the 60s. So no, they have perfected anti-gravity. They have also perfected... uh, uh, crossbreeding to 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 make these different kinds of men they're 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 neutral you know they can't reproduce um, but they have done some horrible things uh, with the race at Area 51 and now another area in southern Nevada. Now I understand that a lot of these um, people involved in the occult believe in specific days of the year that are special to them and these imaginary lines that are connected, I forgot the correct term for them, such as uh, Boston and D.C. and and um, other cities, they all are imaginary line that connect with, like, Stonehenge. Do you believe that there's some sort of spiritual connection to what they, what these people do? For their yes, culture? I do. Oh, yes, because the devil, according to First Second Corinthians 4, 4, the devil is the god of this world. So, therefore, as he orchestrates his kingdom here on earth, he's going to have his cities in certain occultic uh, patterns. I don't think they started out that way, especially in historic Protestant nations when the Protestants were fleeing Europe, but he made them that way. He brought them around to be that way. So I have no doubt that he has his occult design for the location of cities in the administering of his empire and all the major cities for the most part in the world capital cities and the big banking systems are all disgraced with these obelisks so that's another part of his his uh all looking forward to horus looking forward to the man it's phallic so the coming risen horus all the cities must be looking forward to this which will be the final pope killed and come back to life and incidences like uh, Waco, 
where people are burned, would that be like a ritual right. sacrifice? Why, of course, sure. There was no need for that. Right. And it was carried out 